The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everybody, this is Sophie from English Australia. Welcome to this afternoon's webinar, Mission Engage. And thank you to our two presenters, Kira and Heno, for agreeing to present today's session. This is actually a repeat or something similar to the session that they presented at the 2018 English Australia Conference. Um, it was so well received at the conference that we thought that it'd be worthwhile sharing with more people around Australia. I'll tell you a little bit about today's presenters. They both work at the Institute of Continuing and TESOL Education at the University of Queensland in Brisbane. Kira is a teacher trainer and also a TESOL teacher, and she has a particular passion for using drama in the classroom. I've seen her present on this topic at the Queensland PD Fest, and she was very animated. <laughs> um, Heno is also a teacher and he's the Senior Teacher of Technology and Independent Learning at ICT and he has a particular interest in integrating ed tech into the classroom and also in supporting teachers to use more technology in their classrooms. So thank you very much for coming today. Just before we get started with the actual webinar, I'd just like to remind everybody that if you'd like to know about more English Australia webinars, what's coming up, you can go to our website at this top link that's presented on your screen now. And then also, if you want more information about the activities that English Australia does in the space of professional development throughout the year, then please sign up for our newsletter. You can register on our website homepage. The link's there now. All right, thank you. Time for Mission Engage. Let's take off. Thanks, Sophie. Yeah, thank you very much for those nice intros yeah. and uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, do you want to introduce yourself briefly or do you want yeah. to... Well, we, yeah, we'll tell you a little bit about ourselves um, in a second, but mm -hmm. before we do, um, I know the slide you're seeing at the moment is about um, what we did and so um, we were just asked to explain some of the words that mm -hmm. are in our, <laughs> in our title. <laughs> So obviously, um, so Mission Engage, it's, it's an action research project, which meant that um, it took place in the classroom. We did, uh, you know, research around the problem that we identified and um, gamifying, uh, goal setting. So gamifying, talking about um, or using the elements of gamification and game-based learning, um, things like leaderboards and points and teams and so on. Mm -hmm. And we use that in a goal setting context. Yeah, so for us, goal setting is about um, discussing at the beginning of a course or at the beginning of a program what the, what the students would like to achieve by the end of the program. So that, um, that's how we looked at goal setting. And then to launch student engagement. And by engagement, we meant how the students engage with one another in English, in the classroom, but also outside of the classroom and also beyond the, the classroom and their classmates. So using their English and their topics from their textbook outside around Brisbane. Yeah, um, so that's pretty much um, what our uh, action research was about. Mm -hmm. Can we just go to the next slide? Yeah, we just go there? to the next slide. Uh, and the reason we did this together is because we both teach at, as Sophie said, at the Institute of Continuing and TESOL Education, and we both work on a program that is a direct entry program into uni. So we have a lot of students who just want to study really hard and then leave the classroom and go home and keep studying really hard. Mm -hmm. And we found that they weren't kind of using their English in any other way other than in the classroom. Yeah, and um, we sort of both came from this at different angles um, with uh, Kira being the goal setting guru <laughs> and myself being the sort of the teach in charge of supporting teaching and learning with uh, technology. Mm -hmm. So that's where we sort of intersected and we thought, hey, how can we bring those two elements together and try to um, encourage student engagement um, with the outside world, with the community, and, and help students see that what they do in the classroom um, relates to language. what they do yeah. in the real world, yeah. So yeah, a few years ago, I, my project was on, um, on 
posters at the beginning of a program, students making posters about their, their goals, and then having those posters around the classroom so that we refer to them all the time. So when we talk about confetti posters, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, and uh, you might have noticed we've got a bit of a space themed uh, presentation for you. So, um, launching student engagement out of the classroom into the stratosphere. So like any good explorer, you need a bit of a toolkit. So we're hoping that uh, by the end of this webinar, uh, you'll have a few tools for your explorer toolkit. So maybe a few uh, tech tools, maybe a few non-tech tools, and probably more important is all the lessons that we learned along the way. We learned some lessons the hard way, and uh, so we'll hopefully by the end of this we'll have a really quick, easy way for how to do this and not fall into any of the pitfalls that we do. All right. So one of the tools that we used for this was um, one called. Go to the next one here. Yeah. Sorry, we just uh, it moves to the next slide a little bit slowly. So one of the tools that we used to uh, sort of do our research was was something called Goose Chase. So um, I'm sure by now quite a few of you have probably heard of, of scavenger hunts and online scavenger hunts. And Goose Chase is one of these online scavenger hunt platforms. When we actually did this presentation at the conference last year, we, uh, we had the participants do a scavenger hunt with the app and download the app and so on. Obviously, that's not possible with the webinar. So we're going to just ask Sophie, maybe if you could um, share our screen and we can just quickly run through the scavenger hunt platform. So the scavenger hunt is the first version of what we did. So please don't panic if this looks really techy to you. <laughs> and there are coming up a lot yeah. of other less techy versions. Yeah. So the first thing to note is it's uh, Goose Chase EDU, which means that you can get a free version when you sign up for an education uh, account. And um, this is sort of how you make a game. So this is just a game that we made for a class called um, from a Japanese class uh, from Kansai University. And you basically just fill in the details of the names and everything and the type of game you want. And um, you can then choose uh, whether you want to make the game individual or put them in teams. So in this case, we made some Australian animal teams and we put the students <laughs> into different Yes, they are. There we go. There's the Kimbers. And uh, put them into different teams over there. Yeah, and you can choose to run individual games as well. We'll talk a little bit about which ones are better for different options a little bit later. Um, and then basically you can choose how long you want to run it. You can start and stop it at a different time. And most importantly are the missions. So the missions are the goals that you want your students to achieve. Um, there's a variety of mission types. You can choose that they submit a photo, as you can see with this photo submission here. Um, you can give different amounts of points for different types of missions, depending on how difficult it is. You can have a text submission where you ask them to submit a piece of text, either a specific answer or an open answer. You can also ask them to do photos, uh, sorry, videos, or, do to, or to do check-ins. So for example, if they visit Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary, they can check in with the GPS on, um, on the app. So this is the online platform, but the students will download the app, um, which goes along with this. And as the, the teacher or the administrator, what you would then see is you would see the activity in real time as the students complete the different activities. Um, so these guys checked in in Byron Bay and they got 200 points. Um, you can also add or subtract points for creative submissions or if they missed the instruction and they um, submitted something incorrectly, you can ask them to do it again. Or minus points. Yeah, and they can also see the activity feed importantly and uh, they can also see the leaderboard. So one thing you'd notice is a lot of these gamified elements here. Um, friendly competition, points, leaderboards, and so on. On the right over here, you can also choose to send the teams a message, which would be a push notification that comes through to their phone. Come on, echidnas, you're in second place, or come on, quackers, can you catch the bilbies? 
any types of messages to, to motivate and encourage them some more. And then you've got the individual submissions here. So um, that's basically how you would then uh, build the game. And we'll explain to you a little bit more on how we chose the missions and which types of missions we chose. So we'll stop sharing our screen now. Yeah. We'll come back to that. Okay, great, thank you. So that's what Goose Chase looks like and that's how um, we were experimenting with this gamification of goal setting by turning the students' goals into missions. And, um, but we had a look at some theory behind it to just give us an idea about what, um, about why we wanted to try using games. So, um, yeah, like any good sort of research project, there's got to be some kind of theory that underpins that, uh, that project. And we looked at um, uh, motivation theory, um, Becky and Ryan's self-determination theory, um, which is sort of a, it's a big meta theory. It's been you know, um, widely researched and used um, in various contexts, looking at motivation and so on. But basically what it comes down to is, is the following sort of little bit that you can see on the screen there, which is that if you um, support students' autonomy, um, their competence, and relatedness. And the reason I underlined or we bolded those three terms is we'll come back to those later because they're, they're quite key to what we did. Um, but if you can support those three elements, that fosters the, the highest levels and the highest quality of motivation and engagement for activities. And what results from that is enhanced performance, persistence in performance and creativity. So. In, in our context, that would be performance in terms of student engagement and also um, language proficiency in building their, their English language proficiency. So um, that's the first sort of theory we looked at. Yeah, we really wanted to motivate them to use their English outside of their classroom, mm -hmm. basically. So sometimes people say, oh, is this about motivation or engagement? But it's mm -hmm. really about motivating to engage. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a bit of a feedback loop too, because the more engaged you become, the more motivated That's you become. Right. Um, and then the second element that we wanted to combine, as we mentioned earlier, was the, the idea of uh, gamification, which is um, that idea of game-based learning, using different elements from, I guess, from video games and different types of games, um, things like friendly competition, um, and you know, leaderboards and points, and sometimes teams and so on, and there's various uh, pieces of research out there that have shown that that provides strong motivation um, for learning and to increase student performance. So those are the two sort of ideas that underpinned um, this research project. Yeah. So then we decided to do a test on one of my classes. So I had a class that were pre-service teachers and we asked them if they would be interested in experimenting with us. They had a very high level of English. So for them, it wasn't really about English. It was about trying something that they might use one day in their own classrooms. And we did a survey with them and they gave us lots and lots of um, feedback, uh, plenty of free advice. Straight away, um, when we, straight away when we started the program, we realized that um, when we set the goals at the beginning of the program, they have to be smart goals because um, if they're not specific and measurable, then there's no way to turn them into uh, for the next. Mm -hmm. So basically, we gave them their posters: what are your English goals? What are your Aussie goals? What are your teacher training goals? And they uh, they made them very specific, and then we asked them what mission do to prove that. So for example, um, they wanted to go to the cinema and so they said, I have to see one movie and I have to take a photo or check in at the cinema. So we asked them to tell us what the evidence would have to be and what the, um, how many points it would be worth. We discovered some things about Google. So if you just do something similar with your class and use goose chase. A couple of things to remember. Feel free to photograph this slide. Um, 
that videos are a maximum of 30 seconds and you need to upload the photos at the time that you take them. So if you're giving evidence, um, if you join a club, for example, mm -hmm. make sure you take the photo on that time. You can't later do it. We also worked out that some missions are, are better for groups and others are better for individuals. So if it's just checking in at the cinema, yeah. then maybe only one person goes and the others just ride on their coat yeah. kind of thing. So you do really have to sort of um, think about how you want to design the, the missions um, to maximize engagement. And um, I guess something else that we learned a lot from this too was um, students need and also want constant reminding um, about you know the the game and so on. So they really want us to be involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so we would go into class and on a weekly basis, for example, and say, "Hey guys, how are you going with your goose chase missions?" Let's look at the leaderboard. Yeah. And then some people are like, "What? I'm only two points away. Can I go?" And then they try to. And and what's nice also, as you might have seen in, in on the on the platform, is there's that in-app messaging service. So you can send reminders. You know, I I tended to send them sort of just before the weekend when I knew they were out and about and doing things, and say, "Hey guys, it's the weekend. How many missions can you complete this weekend?" That Come on, Wales, thing. you're coming last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So um, yeah, and I guess the first test flight it it helped us. Um, gave off some of the rough edges, we learned a few good lessons, and it really was a bit of a pilot test flight in that regard, yeah. and it set us up well for our, our second test flight, which was our sort of bigger, um, the, the, I guess the media part of our actual yeah. research project. So how we really kicked off this second one what was we'd go into the class and first of all have a big conversation yeah. about what engagement is, what the project is, why we're setting goals, kinds of goals that are going to be helpful and what they want to achieve, where they want to be at the end of the project. And for us, it was about a three, four Yeah, so project. as Kira mentioned in the beginning, we were both on um, the direct in entry pathways program courses. So these were students who were on their way to university. They were mostly um, monocultural and um, we decided we were going to use four different classes for this research. And each one we would um, sort of test things a little bit differently. We set it up a little bit differently and um, see how that panned out in our research. So um, each class was roughly 17 or 18 students. I think we had about 60 or 61 students in total. And um, so the way that we set it up was we had the, the four different um, cohorts. And the first one we decided what we wanted to test what would happen if we set the goals and not the students. Um, so we set lots of goals around their course books and um, sort of English language things, things that we wanted them to engage with. Things we wanted them to find around Brisbane. Yeah, and we built those missions into one game for them on the Goose Chase app. And then the second group, we thought, all right, well, how about we sit back and we just let them choose all of the missions. So they decide exactly what they want to do. As long as they're smart missions, which are achievable, we're happy to just accept them and put them into the, into the game, and build that for them. And then the third one, we did a combination of student and teacher set goals, and we built that into the game. And then the, the last class, unfortunately, was sort of like our control group, and they didn't get the gamified version with the app. They just got the goal-setting posters, um, which they left on, we left them on the back of the class, but there were also student set goals. So they set the goals. They set their Aussie goals and their English goals and put them up in the posters and they were always in the back of the room. Yeah. And, and we came in once a week, like we did with every class. Yeah, we treated them the through. same. Yeah. As everyone else like this. But instead of looking at the leaderboard, we just looked at their posters and said, how are you going? Yeah. Yes. Um, great. So we learned a lot from this. This um, test flight number two ran for three weeks. And these are some of the types of missions that were built into it. The first few that you can see here are the even set ones. No, I was just going to say with the with the four different versions. But later, we're gonna oh, we're going to check in with Sophie to see. Um, which ones you think were the most popular? That's right. Yeah. If you just go back a slide there. So we'll yeah, have a look at these and um, and think which one you think is going to be the most motivating 
if, if they were more motivated by us setting the goals or by setting the goals themselves. And whether they were more voted, motivated with just the paper posters or with using the case app. Yeah. Gamifying it. Yeah, so feel free to put your answers in the chat and uh, we'll check in with Sophie a little bit later yeah. and she can give us your, um, your opinions on that. Yeah. So yeah, just coming back to a couple of the um, examples of some of the uh, missions that the students set. So a lot of them really, they were really interested in eating kangaroo and crocodile and things like that. So we said, sure, and we put that into uh, the game. Uh, it was whale watching season yeah, up there in Queensland. So students wanted to go watch, um, go do some whale watching. Um, you'll notice also that the points for eating, eating kangaroo and whale watching is the same because we were also aware of the fact that we didn't want them to spend too much money yeah. on achieving these goals. We wanted a bit of equity too. So we made sure that the free goals needed to be worth more points than the ones yeah. that they actually had to, had to pay for. That doesn't make it fair then if you get more points doing like Some other goals, one of the English goals that they had was to, um, one of the classes really wanted to practice their writing. So I really was going to be in the And one of the classes really wanted to be in the Yeah, hi guys. I think is your mic okay? It just just now went quite muffled. Yeah, uh, that's it's better. gone now. That's better. That yeah. Better? Okay, great. yeah, the funny sound has gone. Yeah, great. Okay, and um, so yeah, and these are some of the other goals that yeah. um, they wanted to achieve. So the, um, the the students set the one about going to see a performance at the theatre. And we set the one about joining the chorus because it's a big part of being a student at ICT. So we said we want them to get a photo with Vicky, who I'm sure lots of you know as well. She runs our chorus here. So Yeah, who uh, also has a very, uh, well, has her own wonderful student engagement yeah, uh, project, right. which is the Raise Your Voice um, Choir. So. Yeah, that's right. Um, she's also actively involved with student engagement and supported us a lot through this as well. Um, and then... So those are the kind of missions. So that's how we turned their goals into missions. And then, as we said, we really wanted some teacher set ones and they we wanted to focus those around their textbook. So we did language ones and we did uh, topic ones. So we're just trying to change the slide. When we change to the next slide, you'll see the go. one at the top. Thanks, Henry. Yeah. The one at the top is about um, prefixes that they studied in class, and then they had to take photos of posters or things around Australia they saw with those. And the second one is a topic-based one. So the topic was fast fashion. Yeah, and that's, I mean, uh, that's, that's a, that relatedness That's idea. right, totally sort of taking what they do in the class and taking it out and saying, well, look, this isn't just an uh, in-class topic. This is something you can go and talk to people about and they'd be interested in talking to you about it. And as an added bonus, you get to practice your English and use your language that you studied in class. And all the topics in their textbook are really newsworthy. Mm -hmm. so, we, so we really tried to connect them. With, a lot of my students, for example, say they don't watch TV, so... Trying to get them to watch mm. War on Waste, for example, when they're talking about rubbish. Yeah. Um, so here's just a, it's a little screenshot from one of the classes, and you can see a lot of the students got really involved. They they submitted a lot of or completed a lot of the missions. Um, I mean, it only goes down to number nine. Um, but you know, there's always one or two students also who who aren't that keen to get involved, and they're not really what you would call say. Um, digital risk takers or um, really they don't really see team players, team players <laughs> or whatever it might be so um, we also try to get them involved by making a few sort of um, I guess you could say low hanging fruit that they could pick with missions that were really easy to achieve so 10 points for taking a photo of uh, a coffee that you ordered on campus yeah. um, or, just, or, or something a bit more individual like this is my vocab list for the week or my diary entry yeah. not you don't have to collaborate. Yeah. So 
that doesn't mean that they're engaging with other people, but they are using their English yeah. and engaging with um, their English. And I guess and that's, that's sort of that exposure to it. And then hopefully they will get the ball rolling and they'll start to do a few more difficult missions and yeah. get a bit more engaged. So um, that's also the way that we built it was with a few easier ones and deadly um, going up in increments of difficulty and challenge. And um, here's just another screenshot from one student who uh, went hell for leather and sort of he submitted all, he completed all of the missions and um, that's sort of what you see from the teacher view and you can watch the little videos and you can sort of give extra points and add comments and things like that. So that was really good to see um, a lot of students really getting engaged and you could see that, um, you know, they were, they're really enjoying it too. And that's the feedback that we got from, from a lot of them too. Yeah, t totally. So um, I don't know if we mentioned this earlier, but we did a little bit of a, a pre-survey beforehand where we asked them, you know, how, how do you get engaged in English uh, at the moment? What kind of things do you do outside of class? What kind of things did you do back in your country um, outside of class when you're not studying? Yeah. And Just to make them aware of that community idea that it feels like a lot of students come here and get really lonely or forget that. Um, they can make a community and have a community. So we were quite explicit about who, who do you hang out with in your free time? Mm -hmm. What do you do in your free time and that kind of stuff? Yeah, and then after the three weeks when the, the sort of project had ended, we surveyed them again and, um, you know, to find out how did they find it and what, if, whether it made any difference and so on. So we won't bore you with all of our different stats, but we'll just share some of the discoveries that we made along the way um, with the first one here was related to um, setting goals and so you can see we, we had a total of 61 students there and we thought you know of course setting goals is going to really boost the motivation to get out and do things and um, most of them said yeah somewhat yeah um, a bit. which I guess is better than no or, yeah. or a little <laughs> So, Especially as I've been doing it for three years. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, but it, I mean, it makes a difference, but just not quite as much as thought yeah. it would, in a, in a sense. And then. But we discovered lots more very interesting things. So, um, for example, the fact that we arranged what happened, they found a film. So, that's really helpful. Um, except for one student. Um, which we're glad that they said no, otherwise we wouldn't have had to go down from that screen. And we're getting the efforts of scoring from over here and we didn't have to help them. And that's the assumption that we made there. And then um, this one was quite interesting because we looked at sort of, you know, whether um, the app and us coming in to remind them and so on made any difference to their motivation. And you see the top three sort of elements there, the readable, the point, the writing, all uh, the gamified elements. Um, so the gamified elements seem to most of it quite a lot to get engaged on some of the parts of the thing that they sort of um, support and confirm the other theory about that. Then um, the third Yep, so the top answer was student and teacher set goals, followed closely by teacher set goals. Ah, interesting. Mm. So these um, little planets that we've got there, they're actually um, proportionate to um, the amount of motivation that the different modes of goal setting had. So if you've got a good memory, you'll remember what the different colors were. So obviously the red planet there is the most, was the most motivating mode of goal setting. And if you said that it was hmm. student set goals and the goose chase app, you would have been correct. Yeah. So interestingly, it wasn't teacher set and teacher plus student. Students liked being completely autonomous and setting their own goals. And so you'll see even the one with no app, students set goals with posters, was the second most popular mm. one. Which um, again sort of confirmed, uh, if you remember uh, the self-determination theory, those three elements which are really important, one of them was autonomy. Mm -hmm. 
I guess, ownership of learning. Um, and this sort of confirmed that, that the students really like to set their own goals and take uh, control of their own learning in that regard. And interestingly, um, yeah, they even with posters, that still tended to be motivating. So even without the, the high-tech uh, goose chase that the we were using. The super fun gamification, yeah. So that was really interesting for us. And then um, something else we discovered was that, yes, they, uh, we asked them, do you want us, the, the institute, to um, help you with engagement? They all said, absolutely, yes. yeah. Um, and we asked them, how? How would you like us? And that word cloud, obviously, you can see the biggest one there, activity. They wanted us to organize activities for them. So I guess our takeaway from that was that um, <laughs> I guess the students like to set their own goals. So they like to choose the types of activities that they want to do and the types of engagement they want to have. But they want us to organize it for them. And constantly remind them to do it and be the, the, motiv the external motivating yeah. So I guess they 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 want to re request what kind of cake they want us to bake for them, and they want us to bake it for them, and then they want to eat it. <laughs> so that's a sort of takeaway that we got from that discovery that we made. But because of all these things, so we learned that yes, teachers need to be hugely involved, and we discovered at the at the setup phase mm -hmm. we needed we realized we need to remind them weekly at least we realized they want to set their own goals but we thought are there other ways to do it without goose chase yeah so after that sort of big um big part of our project we, we went away and we sort of tried a few different um test flights i guess you yeah. could say and um there were and we tried a few different tech tools and also some non-techy tools yeah and um I don't know if you wanted to. Yeah, so I, I did Padlet. I had a class that I set up a Padlet with on the first day. For those of you who are not familiar with Padlet, it's basically an online um, notice board. So each week I put the class into new groups. I'm, I formed four groups every Monday and I set them missions. And their missions were based on their goals that they had set their English goals that they had set their Aussie goals that they had set and even though the research said um, they didn't necessarily need the goals I be the relatedness element was very important so I always talk to them about the need to connect their text so this is an this is a, a screenshot of a couple of weeks you can see two three and four yeah. So you can see that they they were studying about um, the environment and renewable energy. So they had to find a, a solar panels. So there are lots of photos of solar panels around the place. They wanted their own goals were things like learn more about YouTube. So they had to go and find the um, the three D table of elements and things like that at UQ. They wanted to know more about Brisbane, so I added things like signs on the bus. And then um, in their textbook, they were learning about recyclable packaging and things that are made in Australia and um, trade miles, things like that. So you can see they've got recycled packaging, 100% made in Australia or mostly made in Australia, things like that. So just seeing that their textbook is out there and working in teams and a different team every week. We did a pre and post survey with those guys. And the best thing that came out of that was they said at the end that they felt brave. Yeah. And they did a lot of things that they wouldn't have done otherwise. And also with people they wouldn't have done it with otherwise. Actually. That's right. Some of them said, oh, I, maybe I would have gone there with my friend, but I definitely wouldn't have done it with my classmates. And now I feel like I have stronger bonds with my classmates, which means they have a bigger community. So big win for us. And one of my other classes, made themselves a paper-based game and then they didn't do all of those things obviously like spend a million dollars but as they went around they made a little video of themselves doing each thing and then put it all together and made a little movie of their achievement. So another way that you can um, incorporate I guess gamification through paper-based <laughs> paper games. The old board game but 
the and the um, competence of them being really good at making moves. Yeah, yeah. There, on yeah, those clips and things. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had a couple of classes, and this was actually with the same class that I showed you the boot case with earlier, um, and. I thought we'd try something else, and we tried um, Flipgrid, which is sort of another little uh, student video platform where they can share their students' voices, and um, and you can comment on it, and they can really engage with each other. So this was quite a low-level class, and um, or low-level in terms of English uh, proficiency, and so we did things like go and um, how to order a coffee. So I'd make a little video or some colleagues of mine would make a video together at a coffee shop, we put it up here, and then they would practice the language and go and make little videos of themselves ordering coffee at different coffee shops and they comment on each other's little videos. And, and you can uh, respond in video too, yeah. can't you? So you can make a video response or a comment. So Flipgrip is another great little student engagement tool and it's also really good for those students who, who tend to be uh, more withdrawn in class. They really um, their voice really comes out um, sometimes in quite a surprising way. Um, with that same class, we also did Goose Chase, um, but this time instead of individually, we did it in teams. For those of those Aussie animal teams that you can see, see the echidnas. We think we just worked out why it's like the echidnas. And um, instead of, at the end, instead of doing a survey, I thought as a reflection, um, they could make some posters. So these are the reflection posters on their goose chase experiences. And um, it was really good to see what they found meaningful and interesting and fun to do. Um, a lot of things related to um, Australiana, so um, you know, as Vegemite toast and, and things like eating Vegemite toast Goldie. and going to the Goldie. One of the um, missions was to take a selfie under the surf of paradise fine. And um, yeah, so that was really nice and a different way to see um, how they engaged with it and what they found meaningful as well. So by the end of our of our um It's not sounding amazing. Um, try again now. Okay. Yep. Better. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So, um, the, so at the beginning, set your goals together. Give the students what are your Aussie goals, what are your English goals, and any other goals they might have. If you're not in Australia, then um, just things like what are your, what are your, where can you find English outside the classroom? I'm teaching Korean teachers at the moment and they said you know there are t-shirts everywhere with English or products at the supermarket like Nutella that have English with them. so find go out and realize there's English out there and so get the students to set their goals and let them do that um, turn them into pictures whether it's on Padlet, Facebook or Facebook or on Facebook and then um, have the conversation that that's the while you're doing the who you're going to do, what you like doing, what you like doing. Go over it at one point. Just to relate that point, actually, when we were at the conference, I went to the actual Village Symposium, and there were two physicians that were going to come from other than that. Their actual research project was around scaffolding and collaboration. And about um, how scaffolding really promotes the collaboration between what you're learning. And um, when I watched that, I went, ah, yeah, and that's sort of what we realized that scaffolding the language is having a conversation about engagement, but about scaffolding and how it builds the conversation. That was really um, uh, a nice thing that the puzzle. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So the scaffolding is actually really having a um, and then also we put the meetings there. We put the open and so that there's something for the students or our colleagues. And then we're going to play there. So they're really good at making shows. 
that you can post it and know it might be. And get to know your students and sort of get to know what you can do for their competition, basically. So, um, this is basically our main discovery. So, again, um, this is my Friday evening with the uh, South Theory. That is a very good and this is what I'm sure again. What we learned from all of this is is pretty inaudible just right now. It's just gone quite yeah. bad again. Okay. Was there something it better now? before when you fixed it or? No, we didn't think... change it, but it is saying at the top, even when we're talking, it's saying that that um, you and I are both talking. I think every time that you come in, it gets better. Okay, yeah, yeah that, I was trying for that to happen. Okay, so we can hear you better now, which is good. There, there are right. some questions as well, so do you want me to... Um, ask you? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Okay, so somebody has asked, is there a limit to the number of students that can participate? Good question. I think, I don't think there's a limit on the number of students, but when you sign up for the education basic account, I'm assuming you're talking about Goose Chase, um, then you're limited to five teams. Um, if you wanted to run a bigger sort of um, student engagement project with lots of classes happening at the same time, I suggest maybe talking to your academic manager or your director of studies and seeing if they're willing to pay for an educator premium account, which I think is something like a hundred or hundred and fifty dollars a year. Um, but so you are slightly limited with the free educator account, but um, you know, we do have a lot of teachers here who use the free account um, and it's fine for, for their needs. Great. Um, can students participate individually on Goose Chase? <laughs> yes. They can, yes. Um, again, there may be limits. I'm not 100% sure of what they are with the, with the basic and the premium account, but there's an individual and a group option available. And some things work better individually, but if the goal is collaboration and teamwork, then doing it in teams yeah. is really and You good. can definitely do um, teams uh, for the educated basic account. And on the Padlet, you can change your teams whenever you like because it will up to you. Yep. Okay. Um, someone has asked how much <laughs> class time did you devote to this per week? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so with our main uh, part of our project with the direct entry pathways, uh, we it, we didn't actually use our classes. We sort of came in as the the NPCs, the non-playing characters, and sort of um, asked each teacher um, for ten minutes of their time per week um, to check in with the students. So um, with the initial goal setting, I think we took a little half bit longer. Yeah, yeah, half an hour at the beginning to set it all up, and then after that, it was only ten minutes per week to check in and remind them and check the leaderboard. So not much class time at all. Mm. Okay, great. All right, are there any other questions before we finish up for the presenters? All right. 
And if you do, as you can see on that slide there, our, our um, email addresses are there. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thank you so yeah, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. And thank you to our presenters today. Um, I think we've all come away with more confidence to set up a goose chase activity with our class, definitely. Um, and also some useful alternatives to in, for engagement tools as well. So um, I also loved the creativity that you injected into the activities. Um, the idea of setting Aussie goals is fantastic. I know when I go to a country, you know, I subconsciously have goals for things I want to do when I'm there, but um, spelling them out like that and helping students scaffold that engagement and motivation is priceless. Um, so yeah, thank you. I learned a lot and I'm sure everyone else did too. Thank you. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone else. Bye. Bye.